Good day everyone, my name is Inam Shaleleni and today I'll be talking about the cycle of poverty. So there's this saying by a very famous economist that poverty is a mindset. It creates a sense of scarcity. You then become accustomed to it such that you are hinged on protecting the scarce resources that you have. However, you can only create a sense of abundance by investing what you have, not savings. Savings only become significant if the idea and the motive is to invest. So I want you to think of this question as a move around. So the question is, where do you live? Or where your home is? Um, you understand the significance of this question as a move around. So in the Middle Ages in Europe, there was this hierarchical system that was called, or is called the feudal system, where you had your upper, your middle, and your lower classes. So in your upper class, you had your monarch, the royal family, the nobles, and your um, higher clergy. And then in the middle classes, you had your profession, so your doctors and your lawyers, and the merchant families. And then in the lower classes, there were people that were the peasants. So the peasants went free, they lived in the landlord's land. So every decision of their life, they had to talk with the landlord about it. So they couldn't actually move up in social hierarchies. So then if you were born a peasant, you would then die a peasant. So then just with your thought, do you agree with me when I say that by this time, we should have advanced from a system like that? But then there's still a thing of there's still families that are poor for generations and generations and live in formal settlements for generations. So there's this, when I was searching out for this matter, it said that 11.6 million people in South Africa live in townships, which is 25% of the population, and 4.6 of them live in informal settlements, and that is 12.2% of the population. However, it continues to say that the only people that live there are either migrant workers or refugees, which is not true because the people, most people that live there, have lived there for three or two generations. That is also the case with my family. Currently, I live in, in a informal settlement in Google to called Barcelona. Um, and I remember growing up, I've already had promises by the government that um, they will move the people and they will build better houses for them. However, just like many people or many kids that grow up here, I made a promise for myself to myself when I was like six years old that I would actually move my family outside of the area and go out of the poverty. And I think that's what many people, that's a decision many people decide to take. Then the question becomes, why are there still so many families that live in there if there's so many people making those promises to themselves? So the definition of the cycle of poverty is a self-perpetuating cycle where poverty repeats for generations and generations in a family. Um, so the idea when I decided to do this TED talk was that I want to tell the people in my school to be aware of the situations that they, not, they don't commonly see um, around them. So usually when people are talking about the cycle of poverty, they usually say it's because of the limited access to education, which leads people to not finish school. If they don't finish school, they don't get employed and there's low health assistance, they don't have access to good nutrition. So that's why people then um, become accustomed to drinking drug, to doing drugs or drinking alcohol. And then this causes them to just um, end up in the cycle again. However, I'd like to disagree with what would be the generalized trend. I think there's more causes for people to stay in the cycle than what is known. So I think the generalized trend would be more efficient or could be used maybe in the 2000s and in the late 1990s. However, I think now it is a different case because in most townships and in informal settlements, there's access to education. So then what causes the people to still not gain access to the other opportunities so that they can leave the system. So I'd say if you were in class to raise your hands up um, if your parents have forced you to go to school. How about when you're sick? So most parents in informal settlements, contrary to common belief that they don't want their kids to go to school, they actually force their kids to go to school, even when you're sick. That was also the case with me when I was growing up. So then what causes the kids to, though there's um, this compulsion from home to go to school, why do they not finish school? So usually, if I'll make an example of people that I've seen growing up. So usually if it's boys growing up, they have this passion for soccer, right? Um, and, if it's, and others, they love school, right? However, when they get to the middle grades in primary school, maybe the fifth grade, then they get these ideas from those that are older than them, so in grade seven or in high school, that drinking is um, fashionable and something that makes people happy, and that doing drugs or smoking weed is actually fashionable and cool. And because of those ideas, you have kids that are only like, 15 years old or 12 years old starting to do alcohol and do drugs. And due to that, obviously if you want to play soccer, then you have to have a certain lung capacity. And due to them smoking weed, then they can't qualify for those soccer teams. And therefore, even though a person has talent, I remember a friend of mine who was a dear friend called George that actually couldn't end up playing because he started smoking weed.
Um, so then what usually happens is that after they get to high school, they can't finish high school, then they stop doing school, right? They stop going to school and then they just get a very low paying job just to sustain themselves. However, they also have this idea where um, clothes of labels are very high regarded. So even when you have someone that only gets paid at 2000 you're going to find them wearing a tacky for 3.5. And how do they do that? True debt. Now they're not only in the cycle of poverty, but also in the cycle of debt. Right? So even if, just like how you know that the sun, um, though re rotating in its own axis, it also revolves around the sun. The earth, though rotating on its own axis, it also revolves around the sun. However, we first noticed that it rotated on its own axis because of the fact that it was day, then night. And just like that, they only notice, if they do notice, the cycle of death. However, they don't notice the bigger cycle that they're in, which is the cycle of poverty. So then you have them having to spend their whole lives trying to repay the debt and then making more debt to get these fashionable clothes that they see. And um, so then they just struggle through life and they get children and they expect the children to break through the system. However, they make those children be in an environment that they also grew up in. Therefore, we have kids that actually can't see through the system, which is why I'm grateful. And I think it's very um, important that we have scholarships, just like my scholarship, where you're able to come to a different side of the world and you're able to see through the system due to the people that you surround yourself with when you get to schools like Bible well, class high school. So then, how do I think we can break the cycle? So I think what is most important is that we allow the kids in townships to have access to opportunities to come see or speak to people that live in a different world from them, so that they can get new views that are different from what they used to, so that they can learn. Because I believe that um, by sharing views, you can just you can see true what you believe was true. Because because of what they're surrounded by, their families, their neighbors, they believe that maybe drinking alcohol is cool and that doing smoking weed is also cool. However, if they speak to a person that thinks different from them and is able to reason out that from them, then they will become to get better views of the world. And I also think that it's very important for them to meet um, entrepreneurs that have grown out of the system or came out of the system so that they can be convinced that it is possible, even if it's not true school, you can still make it out of the system. And there's this um, saying by another um, economist that he said that there is no, there's no such a thing as a small business. So they shouldn't take their businesses as small businesses, however, as a business that is still small. So then there's this idea that they're going to grow their business. However, if you build a business and that it's a small business, then you won't have this idea of growing it into more, even if you want it to be more. And I also think it's very important for them to meet people that have escaped the system, so that they know it's possible to escape the system. And obviously, the people that have escaped the system then have ideas and ways that you can see through the system. And I think it's also very important that if you can, um, especially people that do have money, to do scholarships like SPF and other scholarships here at school, then with that we can then get people like me to get out of the system so we can understand the system more and give back to our, our um, communities when we have the power. Thank you.